four months ago in AUDIO LETTER No. 37, I revealed that Bolshevik influences within the Vatican were preparing to throw the Roman Catholic Church into the Bolshevik War against Russia. Two months later I explained how Pope John Paul I had run afoul of this game plan and what had happened to him as a result. I also pointed out the tangible evidence which was available to prove my charges of deceit and fraud within the Vatican. And now the real Pope John Paul II has also fallen by the wayside contrary to appearances. As I explained in AUDIO LETTER No. 39, Karol Cardinal Watiwa of Poland was elected Pope because the Bolsheviks wanted to make use of his anti-Communist image in their war against Russia. But as Pope John Paul II, he also had a flaw which the Bolsheviks could not tolerate. From the moment he became Pope, Watiwa made it clear that he intended to shake up the Vatican bureaucracy known as the Curia. Initially he did not reconfirm any top officials of the Curia. He merely asked Cardinal Villot of France to stay on as Secretary of State quote, until other decisions have been made. Unquote. Through these actions and other statements, Pope John Paul II made it clear that he was planning to completely restructure the Curia. Any such restructuring, my friends, would have dealt a serious blow to Bolshevik power within the Vatican, for it is through the Curia that the Bolsheviks now exercise their Vatican control, and their key agent, Giovanni Cardinal Benelli, is one of those who would have been replaced in a Curia reshuffle. But the Bolsheviks had known that Cardinal Vortiwa as Pope would try to change the Curia. As Archbishop of Krakow he had often spoken in favor of such restructuring, so when he became Pope they were already preparing to make sure he did not carry out his plans. When Cardinal Watiwa was named Pope on October 16, 1978, it was only his anti-Communist image that the Bolsheviks wanted. Watiwa himself was a strong-minded man, not the type that usually makes a good puppet. And so even before his election, Watiwa's unacknowledged replacement was being prepared. For the first few weeks of Pope John Paul II's reign, he was kept busy with public appearances. On October 27 he began his shake-up of the Curia by firing a veteran Cardinal, Cardinal Felici, as President of an important Vatican Council, but his heavy schedule of public activities tied his hands from moving rapidly on the promised reforms. Then in mid-November the Pope virtually dropped out of sight for a time, but on November 21 the Vatican released an announcement that was as brief as it was stunning. As of that date Pope John Paul II was said to have confirmed in their posts all the top Curia officials who had served the previous two Popes. Without explanation we were told in effect that Pope John Paul II had undone his own plans for Vatican reform. My friends, here is what actually happened. During the period in mid-November when Pope John Paul II was seen very little, his poisoning was in process. Beginning November 18, this took the form of a very powerful airborne poison based on plutonium and zirconium, a variant of the poison that produces Legionnaire's disease. The Pope's condition deteriorated rapidly, and he died at approximately 4 p.m. Rome time on November 20, 1978. Shortly thereafter his body was secretly removed from the Vatican, being taken first to an interim location about 45 miles northwest of Rome. By 8 p.m. Rome time the following evening, November 21, his body had been cremated. It was earlier that same day that the Vatican issued the terse announcement saying the entire Curia had been reconfirmed by the Pope. Since that time an actor has been playing the part of Pope John Paul II. This man is neither Polish nor Christian. Those in Europe who have more opportunities than we in America to see the Pope should observe him closely. Pay close attention to the voice, the mannerisms, the closeness of the photography. Compare the pictures of the dead Pope and this actor and the exact nature of his public utterances. These days the actor Pope is the most visible Pope in history, 
made so by the controlled major media, and his pronouncements are moving the Roman Catholic Church closer and closer to open confrontation against Russia. My friends, in AUDIO LETTER No. 39 I explained how the Satanic fraud surrounding the death of Pope John Paul I could be proven. Now their fraud has taken the life of another Pope, and 700 million Catholics are gradually being called to arms in the cause of Bolshevik warfare against reviving Christianity in Russia. My friends, besides the Middle East there is one other imminent trouble spot for Russia right now, and that's Poland. In AUDIO LETTER No. 42 I revealed the Bolshevik plans for a Pope's revolution to erupt during the actor Pope's visit to Poland. Originally the visit was scheduled for this month, May, but was delayed until next month instead. And very early this month the actor Pope, the Bolshevik double for the late Pope John Paul II, was eliminated along with his Bolshevik boss, Cardinal Benelli. Both have been replaced by doubles from Russia, but the evidence is not yet clear as to whether these doubles are human or robotoid. Having accomplished this Vatican coup d'etat, the Russian and Polish leaders believe they will be able to prevent the assassination of the Pope from taking place next month. That is why early this month Poland suddenly reversed her earlier plans to levy stiff charges against journalists who entered Poland to cover the Pope's visit. It is a calculated risk, but the Russians feel that the publicity surrounding the Pope will be beneficial if the Bolshevik assassination plan can be thwarted.